Welcome to our course Lexical Studies. And today our topic is Lexical Priming and its Implications. So, here you can see Lexical Priming and Mental Concordance. Mental Concordance means mental agreement. Mental agreement for different words that exist in our minds. And we use those, those uh, mental agreement according to the situation when we interact with other people. And that situation is if uh, the situation is this social or physical or interpersonal environment or sorry context or exposure, we use those words that are fit according to the situation, according to the speaker and hearer. So this mental concordance is accessible or is approachable and can be processed in much in the same way that computer concordance and so that all kinds of patterns including collocational patterns are available for use in different related items when we want to use um, sorry when we want to know the meaning of a individual word we put the word we write the word on engine search engine and we see uh, there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of uh, exposure or there is a lot of options that are available on search engine here you can see the example for example I want to see the meaning of this connotation so I write the word on search engine there is a so first of all the phonetic tra transcription in what way phonetically or it's a pronunciation of the word connotation here you can see the speaker and you can see the transcription transcription of those that word connotation then uh, it will tell us about the uh, meaning it's a noun it's a verb or all possible possible solution of related to this word or possible implications or different meanings related to this word connotation we can see on this computer or on this search bar next it's also related to this word connotation and if we, and I will say you people you must try to find out this word exactly this word connotation you must write on the search bar and you will see this word, the previous page on this page you can see these two pages on in your front so here you can see images here you can see meaning synonyms or definitions grammatical definitions or other related things you can see as so we can relate this mental concordance and mental agreement this process can be related to the computer as the things are available and we can apply those things according to the situation according to our own circumstances or context so likewise in the, this uh, in our mind in human mind this mental concordance uh, acts like a, hum a computer where things are available where the words and sequences of the words is available that is pre-existed and how much we interact with other people we put those things uh, in our situation according to the needs or according to the demand of our conversation so there are types of lexical priming two types we can see productive priming or receptive priming productive priming it's very interesting or it's very easy to get mastery over this productive priming it occurs when a word or word sequence is re repeatedly encountered in discourses or in dealings in interaction in which we are ourselves expected or we want to participate we want to uh, we want to enjoy or we want to participate in that situation that the things or that environment the exposure that is liked by us so when the speaker or writers are those whom we like or wish to follow uh, it means the things when we are in when we are indulged in the situation that we like or we enjoy it means the words that we will use for example here you can see the word or word sequence uh, number one is the word food Oh, food when a child or a teenager will use this word food or he or she is uh, interacting with other age fellows so definitely they will talk about fast food or maybe a mature person maybe uh, there is a doctor who is uh, using this word food or hygienic food or like healthy food 
Next one is engine. Uh, driver will use a heavy engine or the other, what we say, a powerful engine. Likewise, games, the word games, uh, different games, mobile games or interesting games. Lecture, lecture could be informative, lecture could be comprehensive. So, next, here you can see the word sequence also, fast food or hygienic food or healthy food. We can see, relate these words with prime words. Powerful engine or strong engine or heavy engine, mobile games, interesting games or very informative lecture or comprehensive lecture that we can say. So here we learn a lot, we learn easily, we use, we become the expert user of that particular word or word sequence that are according to our own taste, according to our own willingness. Or we, when we enjoy the environment or context, we use these words. This is called product learning. On the contrary, um, or on the other hand, receptive priming is not related to the, to the environment that we like uh, that we like very much. It occurs when a word or word sequence is encountered in context in which there is no probability or even possibility of uh, our being an active participant. For example, political broadcasting, we cannot become the part of that broadcasting, we can just listen. Interviews with film stars, we can just listen here. Or 18th century novels, that really has become the matter of past, so we cannot participate. So there is no possibility to participate in those events. Or where the speaker or writer is someone we, we dislike or have no sympathy with, like drunken football spotters or sometimes stone teacher, the teacher is very strict and people of different age groups, it's called receptive priming, where we cannot participate or we dislike the speakers or dislike the encounters of that in conversation. So receptive priming occurs over there. Two approaches of priming, although there are some other approaches of priming, but we will discuss in our today's lecture just two approaches of priming, semantic or repetitive. Apart from this, there are some other uh, approaches or some other what we can say, uh, types of priming, morphological priming or phonological priming, syntactical priming, and many other we can find out. But here we will focus on just these two, yeah, semantic priming. Semantic as it's related to the meaning. Semantic priming is some it's semantic priming experiments and formats are shown a word or image referred to as the prime and then shown a second word or image known as the target word. The speed with which the target word is recognized is measured. Some prime appears to slow up in formats recognition of the target and the other appears to accelerate in formats recognition of the target. So here image or word is uh, told to the learner or second language learner to whom we want to teach uh, then those learners are related to priming approaches or priming, uh, lexical priming. So what the process will be there, here we will see the speed according to which our learner learns that language or sometimes we can say this process would be slow up or maybe there is no learning or may, maybe there is no combination of the words creates in the minds of the informant or in the mind of the speaker or sometimes if uh, at same time it accelerate the process can be quick or immediate uh, combination or immediate process of the combination can create it by this semantic priming. Sulzer and Martin, among others, who appear to show that the semantic priming only works when the priming word and the target are associated in the informant's mind. According to this work, a relationship of meaning between prime and target is insufficient to produce a priming effect if the related words are not also associated. See these examples? According to this semantic priming, here the word prime word is wing. So the first prime word is wing and the next associated word is director. So we cannot associate this wing this word wing with director.
for the right director may be going. So there is no recognition or there is no combination, there is no association between these two words. Next word is pig. Typically has no effect on the recognition of the word swan. However, we can relate the word swan with wing. Or when we utter a word wing, there is a next word or there is a recognition of the word swan. Swan is a water bird, a small water bird who has long beach. The word book, think about this word book, book rack, bookshelf. The word horse can speed up the recognition process of the word pony. You know, however, if we use the word horse or we use elephant, I think there is no recognition of the words. With the horse or elephant, it's a different category of the animals. Although we can say that it's also animals. But the combination or recognition of the process is speed up when we use the word horse with pony. Pony is also a type of horse, a small Horse. Repetition priming. The next approach. First one there was a semantic priming, and next one repetition priming. Repetition priming is rather different from the semantic priming in that the prime and the target are identical. Sometimes after a considerable amount of the time, and after that they have seen or heard lots of other material, measuring how quickly or accurately the informants recognize the combination when they finally see here each again. The evidence suggests that the initial exposure has the effect of speeding up and improving the quality of recognition on re exposure when exposure is given again and again so this repetitive process accelerates the recognition process in the informants or the user of that language easily combines the sequence of the words or word phrase for example uh, alistair may be shown the word scarlet scarlet is a name uh, Scarlet color followed by the word onion. Onion, the color of the onion is scarlet. A day later, if he or she is shown the word scarlet again, he she will be able to recognize the onion more quickly than other words. Sometimes we are confused related to this collocation or lexical priming. Maybe these are the same things. What could be the difference if there is a difference existed? So make clear that Hoy indicates that the collocation is a concept or idea that is universal or general. Or priming is the result of a speaker encountering evidence and generalizing from it. So collocation is the idea and priming is the result of that, that idea or practically what we can say practically we are using in the context according to the situation according to the exposure according to the circumstances we are using those collocation or practical approach is called priming whereas theoretical approach is called collocation. So examples of collocation pay attention fast food make an effort and powerful engine. So when we are using these expressions or these are um, sequences of the words or combination of the words when we are using practically in our exposure during our conversation, it means we are uh, exercising lexical priming or however when we use, when we using these words, association of these words, we can say these are the collocation but when we use in practically, practicality form, we can say these are the priming or lexical priming. <coughs> I'm sorry. So lexical priming theory tells us that each time a word or phrase is heard or read, it occurs along with other <coughs> other words, it's collocated. <coughs> so this leads us to expect it to appear in a similar context or with the same grammar. In the future, and this priming influences the way we use the word or phrase in our speech and writing. By overuse of those collocations in a practical form, by that, by that process, we become the efficient user or we become the fluent speaker of that particular language. So, these are, this is a simple difference you can highlight between collocation and priming. So, it's the end of our today's lecture. Goodbye.